know who we are. You know who we are. We are QPR. The 1966-67 season has gone down in folklore as one of the greatest seasons in the history of Queen's Park Rangers. This five-part series will look at what happened during this great season for the club. So as 1967 started, in the league we only actually played twice in January. A 2-1 win over Reading and a one-all draw up at Doncaster, which kept Rangers top, but all the excitement and focus was over the cup competitions. We eased into the third round of the FA Cup with a 2-0 win over Bournemouth before the 17th of January 1967 and a League Cup semi-final against Birmingham City. Now Birmingham were in the top six of the second division and had some quality players including Barry Bridges who would go on to play for QPR a few years later. A crowd of over 34,000 were in attendance in what men expected to be the end of our cup run and it looked like that would be proved right. When Bridges put Birmingham ahead early, the dream was coming to an end. Or was it? The half-time team talk from Alex Stock certainly did the trick, and we came out for that second half absolutely flying. Rodney Marsh equalised with a far post header, and that spurred Rangers into life as we played Birmingham off the park. Mark Lazarus, Les Allen and Roger Morgan all scored goals in the second half to secure an unbelievable 4-1 win for QPR and we had one foot on the bus to Wembley. The other semi-final was also a big win, with West Brom thrashing West Ham 4-0. Rangers ended the month losing 3-0 to Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup, in a game that saw former QPR goalkeeper Ron Springer in goal for Wednesday against his brother Peter, who was in goal for Rangers that day, in front of a crowd of 40,000. Peter must have done something right in that game, as he moved to Sheffield Wednesday a few months later, and his brother Ron returned to QPR. As February approached, it was getting to crunch time, and despite a big lead at the top of the table, the club had blown promotion several times in the 60s, so fans were still a little nervous that a brilliant season could still go wrong. Those fears only grew as we drew it home to Mansfield just days before the second leg of the semi-final. Lofters Road was packed with a crowd of 24,000 in to see if QPR could book a place at Wembley. It was a tight and tense first half, with neither side able to open the scoring. But once again, we came out of the second half flying. Rodney Marsh made it 5-1 on aggregate, with a shot from the edge of the box, before adding a second, as Birmingham threw everything forward. Birmingham did get one back, but a late Mike Keane header made it 3-1 on the night, 7-2 on aggregate. An incredible achievement. Third Division QPR were going to Wembley for a major cup final. There was, of course, still a job to do in the league, and a one-all draw at Grimsby soon brought fans back down to earth. But we were soon back to winning ways, as Mark Lazarus scored in a 2-0 win at Peterborough. And then he scored a hat-trick at Swansea for his 16th goal of the season in what would be our last match before the League Cup final. People used to come from far and wide. We were the inside in London. People used to come and watch us. From, I mean, we used to get 22s and 23s as much as the ground could hold in them days. Mm. Uh, we were a good sight to watch. What with Rodney doing his business and scoring 40-odd goals in that season. Uh, Roger and Les Allen... Frank Sibley, Peter Springett, God rest his soul, uh, Jimmy Langley, never to be forgotten Jimmy, done a hell of a lot for, for us. Um, Tony Hazel was a good, good player, you know, good man to have behind me anyway, because he could run. I mean, if, it, if Jimmy Langley would have been behind me, I might have had to tackle back a, few, a bit more than what I did, but uh, Tony was... Very agile, very quick. For instance, the way to describe it all was built. We never, we never had a, uh, a coach in them days. Uh, nobody went out onto the pitch and trained us. We used to go in of the morning. We used to go out onto the onto the pitch, and we used to do a couple of laps of our in our own time, 
and then we used to get the ball out and have a little game of five aside. We used to start work, we used to start training at half past ten and we never used to want to come home. The camaraderie of the of the team, I mean I've been in clubs where I can't wait to get out. You know, do your training, get in your car and drive home. There, I mean days off for instance, nobody, had a, nobody wanted a day off. You know, come Wednesday they say, oh you can have a day off today. You know, don't come in Wednesdays. Everybody used to come in. And it wasn't as if, like, the club was round the corner. I mean, I live at Romford here. Uh, the Morgan twins lived in Leytonstone. Uh, so did Mickey Leach, God rest his soul. He lived in Leytonstone. Uh, um, Mickey Keane lived in High Wickham. Ronnie Hunt lived at Slough. Uh, you know, we were all... Rodney lived in Edmonton or Wimbledon, somewhere like that. You know, it wasn't as if the club was round the corner and we didn't have nowhere to go. Mm. It was, nobody wanted a day off, nobody wanted to leave the training ground. And when Bill Dodging came in, uh, some great thing about Bill Dodging, he came to QPR to be our coach. And he came to watch us play Gillingham, I think it was, away. We'd done him about 4-0 or something like that. And come Monday morning, Bill Dodging got introduced to us in the dressing room and he said, right, we're going out and doing a training session now. And when we got out of the pitch and he went, uh, this was a training session with Bill Dodging's first day. He said, well, what have you been doing before I got here? And we told him. He said, right, carry on doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I was at QPR for eight of them. no better time than at Queen's Park Rangers. And I think the, the, the supporters gave me as much pleasure as I gave them. You know, because I was a, I was a, a, a supporters boy, you know. I, I mean, every time I got the ball, it seemed to lift them. Mm. And everything I'd done, I couldn't do wrong in their eyes, you know. They were, they were marvellous to me. Uh, made me the character that I was. You know, I used to score a goal, I used to go over and shake their hands. One guy said to me, why don't you shake me in the other day? Well, after you scored the goal, he was he was in the, uh, along the wall, you know. Uh, he got the needle because I never shook his hand. There's only about like 12,000 people there at the time. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Coming up next time, the big day has arrived. QPR take on West Brom in the 1967 League Cup Final.